Hello. Yeah. Um, it's good to be home. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be a little irked at me, Abraham. Because Not ever. <laughs> if it sounds that way, it's a misunderstanding. I meant to tongue in cheek. We're so. eager. Yeah. Uh, the reason I say that is because I've tried breathing meditation, but what really works for me, honestly, is 30 minutes a night writing. I get to this blissful state. Uh, I talk about... Good. I mean, as you know, I mean, Good. I know you know all things, but... We'd rather uh, see you in a state of appreciation than meditation anyway, because whether you're appreciating or meditating, there's no resistance in your vibration, and you can't run around meditating all the time. Meditation is the way you clear your mind easily once you get the hang of it. So now we're past that. Mm -hmm. What do you want to talk about? Um, so the man that I write about that I am, that person that he's brilliant, he can do all this, whatnot, uh, it's kind of related to a little bit to the previous question. So, so much of the stuff since I've begun following you is, has, has come to pass. Uh, especially those things within my agency, right? Um, or what I feel is my agency. Everything is. Everything is your agency. So, Even if it's about someone else, because when you care about someone else, you put their improved experience in your vortex. You can't work against anyone, but you can work for everyone. I'm trying to absorb your, that. <laughs> your inner being will not help you work against anyone. Your inner being will help you work for everyone. So to the crux, I know that's what you're thinking. Um, uh, so the the job that I wanted, I, I received fully everything. The job, the culture there, everything, and of course, my I expanded, I grew, I wanted more. Now I'm just going to be honest, and it's going to may sound vain, but whatever. But I want now I've grown. I want the fame, and so I see. I write up the person I write about, and I now expect. I still am not getting that, that next level that I want. Let's talk about that. So when you think about the fame, the mm -hmm. recognition, mm -hmm. what's the emotion? Glee. Um, Good. Well, that's descriptive. Okay. So what do you think that glee is representing? What is it about being seen and understood? What is it that you think is ringing your inner being's bells? I think it's the greatness that I feel about myself. And I feel everyone can get, get there for themselves. But the greatness I feel for myself is being recognized. It's, it, I, I've come into full fruition. That's part of it. But we have some questions for you. Does it feel like the desire for that is because more will hear you and benefit from what you know? Honestly, partially. What's the other part? I mean, then it goes down to the very earthly, the, you know, a, a attention from the opposite sex. It comes from just living that adventure, that, uh, be having that freedom for the adventures I want. Those are all cooperative components that come with that. You want abundance and prosperity, and you want to live easily and freely. In other words, life causes you to want all of those things, and the cooperative components gather them all together. So one is not mutually exclusive of the other. There's nothing out of whack about that. But the reason that we're asking you these questions is because sometimes we're not sensing it here either, but a little, just a little. <laughs> when you're really in sync with your inner being, who knows your value, your power, your ability to articulate, your ability to uplift, your ability to inspire, your ability to get tuned in, tapped in, turned on, your ability to join the forces of non-physical energy and source energy and radiate it. That's who you are. That's who you were born to be. And anything less than that will not be enough for you. So there's that. And that is gleeful. Could you feel it? Some of you are getting goosebumps over that one, aren't you? But there's a difference between wanting to prove something to somebody. They didn't see it. They didn't see it in me. And now that's different because that's pushing against something that someone once thought. It's one thing to let yourself be who you really are. And it's another thing to need to prove it because those guys don't know it. Because when you need to prove it, no matter how big, no matter how famous, no matter how whatever, they still can't hear you because it's not about you. It's about them. But if you make it about you, Jerry always said, as he wanted to expose 
staff or family to nice experiences. I just want them to know what the options are. He didn't want to do it all for them. And he didn't want to undermine them in any way. He just wanted them to know what the options are. Because a lot of people don't know that they have options. And so you've come to show anyone who will listen that they too have options. Yeah. No one gets left out of options. But sometimes it takes some splaining, Lucy. <laughs> just so I can clarify, just so I understand, um, it's because I, I, I'll admit I came up here with a presumption, and that was I'm picking up that end of the stick that I want that fame, I want that acting job, or whatever it is, and I'm, because I'm giving it too much attention. Stop for a moment. You gave us the best opportunity ever to explain in detail what cooperative components are. Cooperative components, don't they go together? Doesn't feeling good go together with other ways of feeling good? But what's happening is you're trying to wedge into there so many people's opinion. Esther said to someone, she had a group of college students in her house last summer, just for a week. And she adored them. She thought they were wonderful. She thinks they're brilliant and they're also incredibly annoying because they have <laughs> strong opinions about everything and they are not always not even hardly usually in touch with their inner beings when they get into these college student let's talk about this and this and this sister so sat in her office which has a half wall on it and she kind of had a bird's eye view she named her house bird's eye a bird's eye view of just about everything that was going on in her surroundings and so she heard a lot of their conversations and every now and again she'd say that's gonna bite you in the butt that's gonna bite you in the butt and finally, they're laughing. What's your grandma saying? What's she saying? Oh, that's just grandma. Don't pay any attention to grandma. You know, that's just grandma. After a while, they started wanting to know. And so Esther explained, if you are down on people who are prosperous, you can never be. You can't have it both ways. You can't practice this vibration of pushing against them. You cannot like their methods. You can choose differently. But this across the board, just pushing against all people who have abundance with some attitude that they're doing something wrong, the law of attraction doesn't make mistakes. Everybody gets whatever it is that they're offering vibrationally. It's an equal opportunity for abundance or poverty. You get to choose. But these kids are still believing that that needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed and that needs to be fixed. Esther would say, it's raining down. And they would say, it's raining? No, abundance is raining down all around you. The world is awash in money. The world is awash in money. And they're looking at Esther's house. It's on the ocean. It had lots of bedrooms. Everybody was comfortable. They were in the hot tub every night. Helicopters are flying over just to take pictures of it. In other words, it was a really nice house. And they're living in it for the week and talking smack about people like Esther. <laughs> And Esther's saying, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. That's what split energy is. I want it, but that'll tear you apart. And so what you're describing is I want it and I want it and it's the butts that get you. Yeah. So sorry, just to clarify the, where am I presenting a, a butt? <laughs> you actually aren't not much. Very little. The reason that we're having this conversation with you is because you came up here feeling guilty about your arrogance. And we are supporting you in what we are calling clarity, not arrogance. And if you ever find yourself for a moment doing otherwise, you'll feel negative emotion and you'll know. That's how it works. Shockingly, you nailed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope I, I was, you were able to help people through me. Undoubtedly. Best conversation about abundance that we've ever had. <laughs>